hello friends so now we are moving on to the second video of quantum physics and this video we are starting with the topic of Planck's hypothesis and Planck's radiation law so Max Planck as you all know is known as the father of quantum physics so in order to explain the distribution of energy in the spectrum of a black body Max Planck established the quantum theory of radiation so this theory is known as the quantum theory of radiation he derived the radiation law on the basis of a few assumptions so first let me tell you the those assumptions number one was all bodies placed inside an enclosure can also emit black body radiation this was his first assumption number two is the atoms in the walls of a black body radiator behave like simple harmonic oscillators and each has a characteristic frequency of oscillation this was the second one and the third one is the oscillator of the black body cannot have any arbitrary amount of energy but has a discrete energy that we will be denoting later on as en so the energy of that oscillator can be denoted as e n which will be equal to we can say n h into nu where n is the integer n is the integer here nu is the frequency of the oscillation and we will be studying h later on so let me repeat it once again the oscillator of the black body cannot have any arbitrary amount of energy but a discrete amount of energy denoted by en that is equal to n h nu where n is an integer that is 0 1 2 etc and nu is the frequency of the oscillation so this relation shows that the total energy of an oscillator is quantized what this relation shows this relation shows that total energy is quantized and the observe assumption number four is the oscillator can radiate or absorb energy in quantas or commonly we can known as packets of h nu the energy packets are of energy h nu that is discrete sets of values so now let n be the total number of Planck's oscillators that is the total number of Planck's oscillators let n be the total number of Planck's oscillators and E capital E be the total energy of them okay so the energy per oscillator let it be denoted as epsilon bar that must be equal to total energy by the number of oscillators so if n0 n1 n2 and etc are the number of oscillators with energy 0 epsilon 2 epsilon so let n0 be the number of oscillator that is with energy 0 n1 be the number of oscillator that is with energy epsilon similarly n2 be the number of oscillator with energy 2 epsilon n3 be with 3 epsilon so n n be with n epsilon energy or let us denote it with an r with r e amount of energy or r epsilon amount of energy so we can say that n must be equal to n0 plus n1 plus n2 plus n r and we can also say from energy principle that e equal to 0 into n0 plus epsilon n1 plus 2 epsilon n2 plus r epsilon n r that must be equal to 0 plus epsilon n1 plus 2 epsilon n2 plus 3 epsilon n3 plus r epsilon n r so from maxwell's distribution formula the number of oscillators with energy re can be 
in R. That is, let me write from Maxwell's distribution. So in R can be equal to n naught e to the power minus r epsilon by k t where k is the Boltzmann constant therefore we can say n1 is equal to n 0 into e to the power what is this minus epsilon by k t similarly n2 n3 can be defined so now if we substitute these values that we have got in this above equation what we must get we will get n is equal to n naught plus n naught e to the power minus epsilon by kt plus n naught into e to the power minus 2 epsilon by kt like this we will get up to n naught into e to the power minus r epsilon by kt so we can write it as equal to n naught by taking n naught common into 1 plus x plus x square so why we are replacing this we can say here x equal to e to the power minus epsilon by kt so we get this form out of it so that is equal to n naught into 1 by 1 minus x since we can say 1 plus x plus x square is equal to 1 by 1 minus x so this we get as n naught by 1 minus e to the power minus epsilon by kt so we get this value for capital N. Similarly, we can also calculate the total energy. So after forming these kind of equations and putting it in this equation, we get the value of total energy E as epsilon n naught e to the power minus epsilon by kt by 1 minus e to the power minus epsilon by kt whole square so we get this value for energy so we get this value for the number of oscillators and we get this value for total energy so now on the basis of the quantum theory the average energy of Planck's oscillator can be written so we can write it by this equation that is we have previously defined e by n so after putting the value of e by n what we will get we will get this result that is epsilon by e to the power epsilon by kt minus 1 so this value finally comes to and we can see it like this that is epsilon bar that is equal to h nu by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 so this is the final value that we get so we can put this value as we have epsilon is equal to h nu so this is the final value we get so now what we have got we got epsilon bar is equal to h nu by e to the power h nu by kt minus one this to be the result so we know that the number of oscillators per unit volume within the frequency range nu and nu plus d nu must be given by 
n equal to 8 pi nu square by c cube t nu we know this previously hence what we can say we can say that the radiant energy density between the frequency range so we can write that the radiant energy density between the frequency range of nu and nu plus d nu is given by e nu d nu that is equal to n into epsilon bar that is equal to we can put here 8 pi nu square by c cube into h nu by e to the power h nu what is the value h nu by kt minus 1 into d nu or by solving this we can write e nu d nu is equal to 8 pi h nu cube by c cube into 1 by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 d nu so we have this value or we can say this relation so this relation is known as the most important Planck's radiation law so to obtain Planck's radiation law that is this law in terms of in terms of wavelength what we can do we can mention the wavelength range that is from lambda and lambda plus d lambda we put nu equal to c by lambda and also we put d nu is equal to modulus of minus c by lambda square d lambda in the equation so the equation somehow looks like this e lambda d lambda is equal to 8 pi h c by lambda to the power 5 by putting this value nu equal to c by lambda in this place into we get 1 by e to the power h c by lambda kt here in, in nu we are putting nu equal to c by lambda and rest is the same that is minus 1 and here we get d lambda so this is Planck's radiation law in terms of wavelength so these two are the most important formulas and we'll be deriving the rest of the formulas from these formulas so now starting with the most important sections that is the derivations we will be deriving first Wien's radiation law from Planck's radiation law so first we need to write some statement so let me write the statement for you all now here in this case for small values of temperature or in the region of low wavelength that is hc by lambda kt of Planck's radiation law I have written in bracket it is lambda that is Planck's radiation law in terms of wavelength becomes very large then hc by lambda kt there is very very greater than 1 hence in the denominator we can neglect 1 so first let me write Planck's radiation law in terms of wavelength for you again so we got previously e lambda d lambda equal to 8 pi hc by lambda to the power 5 into 1 by e to the power hc by lambda kt minus 1 into d lambda so this is the Planck's radiation law in terms of wavelength for you all once again 
so if one is neglected then we get e lambda is equal to a by lambda to the power 5 d to the power minus b by a sorry it is really lambda t so what is a and b here a is equal to 8 pi h c and b is equal to h c by k these are constants so this equation represents wind's radiation law now let us go into derivation of wind's displacement law from planck's radiation law so planck's law shows that for a particular temperature the emissive power e lambda for a perfectly black body increases with an increase in wavelength and becomes maximum at a particular wavelength lambda m so the denominator of the equation that is the planck's radiation law equation that i have written previously here should be minimum so if we consider let z equal to lambda to the power 5 into e to the power h c by lambda k t minus 1 that is the denominator of the equation so for z to become minimum dz d lambda equal to 0 at lambda la equal to lambda m that is at maximum wavelength dz d lambda must be 0 for z to be minimum so if we differentiate therefore we get 5 lambda m to the power 4 into e to the power a c by lambda m k t minus 1 plus lambda m to the power 5 into e to the power a c by lambda m k t into minus of hc by k into if we differentiate this we will get hc by kt into lambda m square that is equal to 0 so now if we solve this equation what we see here it comes out to be 5 lambda 4 that is lambda m to the power 4 e to the power hc by lambda m kt minus 5 lambda m to the power 4 minus hc by kt lambda m cube into e to the power hc by lambda m kt will be equal to 0. So now if in this equation we divide both sides by 5 lambda m to the power 4 into e to the power hc by lambda m kt what we will get we will be getting 1 minus e to the power minus hc by lambda m kt minus hc by 5 lambda m kt is equal to 0 so finally what we get we get 1 minus if we write this as exponent that is exp minus x minus x by 5 equal to 0 where you can say x equal to hc by lambda m k t so what we get here we get 1 minus exponent that is e to the power minus x is equal to x by 5 we get this value so this is a transcendental equation which cannot be solved analytically the only way to solve this equation is by graphical method as you can see so the point of intersection of the two graphs that is y equal to x by 5 and y equal to 1 minus e to the power minus x will give the solution which turns out to be x equal to 4.9651 this is the graphical solution now if we say that x equal to hc by lambda m kt 
or lambda mt you can say is equal to hc by kx then we have the term that is lambda mt is equal to constant so this is what wind's displacement law tells us so we have derived wind's displacement law from planck's rotation law so now the third derivation is of rayleigh jeans law from planck's rotation law for large values of temperature or in the region of high wavelengths hc by lambda kt is very small so thus the exponential term of the planck's rotation law in terms of wavelength can be expanded by this form that is e to the power x equal to 1 plus x plus x square by 2 like this and we get e to the power hc by lambda kt is equal to 1 plus hc by lambda kt neglecting the higher terms in the expansion hence we get from the equation that is e lambda d lambda is equal to 8 pi hc by lambda to the power 5 into 1 by 1 plus hc by lambda kt minus 1 so this is what we get into d lambda so if we equate this further we will get 8 pi hc by lambda to the power 5 into lambda kt by hc d lambda so this comes out finally to be 8 pi kt by lambda to the power 4 d lambda so this is the Rayleigh Jeans law now number 4 derivation is Stephen's law derivation of Stephen's law from Planck's radiation law so from Planck's radiation law that is from the frequency point of view what we get we get e nu d nu equal to 8 pi h nu cube by c cube into e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 d nu so the total radiation energy comprising of all frequencies of a black body enclosure at temperature t must be given by e is equal to since it is the total energy we have to integrate from 0 to infinity e nu d nu that is this is a constant so we keep it outside integration that is h by sorry it is 8 by h by c cube net integration from 0 to infinity nu cube d nu by e to the power h nu by kt minus 1 we have to integrate this so we have 8 pi also kt to the power 4 by c cube into h cube integration x cube by e to the power x minus 1 dx here we are putting x equal to h nu by kt for easy integration but we know previously that integration from 0 to infinity of x cube dx by e to the power x minus 1 what is it it is pi to the power 4 by 15 so it can be shown that for any black body radiation this derivation is viable so what is the equation we get we get e equal to this is e equal to 8 pi k to the power 4 t to the power 4 from here by it is c cube h cube and this integration's value is pi to the power 4 by 15 so the amount of radiation energy passing through unit area in space filled with radiation in unit time at the same temperature 
we can say this to be e dash equal to e into c by 4 that is equal to sigma t to the power 4 where the value of sigma is 2 pi to the power 5 into k to the power 4 by 15 c square h cube that value is equal to 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 and unit is weber meter weber per meter square per kelvin to the power 4 so this is how we can derive stephen's law from planck's radiation law so after deriving all this we can say that light composed of stream of discrete quanta that is discrete energy packets called photons and these photons move through space with the velocity of light so we can arrive at the conclusion that the energy of a photon e is equal to h nu that is equal to h c by lambda and its relativistic mass is equal to e by c square that is equal to h nu by c square that is equal to h by c lambda where the rest mass of the photon is 0 that is m0 is equal to 0 so photon don't have rest mass and also the momentum of the photon p is equal to mc that is equal to h nu by c square into c that is equal to h nu by c that is equal to e by c we can conclude this video with these equations in the next video i will be continuing the chapter with photoelectric effect and compton effect thank you